Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members and guests. The title of my presentation is uh, Which Mesh for uh, uh, Which Patient? Um, why mesh surgery has been introduced into clinical practice uh, um, of pelvic reconstructive surgery? Uh, the literature says that uh, the prolapse uh, have a recurrence up to 40%. Nevertheless, uh, uh, if we perform a combined uh, procedure uh, for uh, uh, central defects uh, as paravaginal defects or apical as well. Uh, if we look uh, at the recurrences, after 10 years, uh, we have uh, very bad results in terms of 50% of uh, subjective uh, uh, cure that uh, is unacceptable comparing to the treatment of uh, stress urinary incontinence. But why do repairs fail? Studies show that patients with uh, pelvic organ prolapse have altered collagen or smart muscle, and uh, the mesh as a role of uh, uh, a framework for the ingrowth of connective tissue and the porous area of the mesh ser serves as a scaffold for subsequent ingrowth of dense infiltrated of fibrous tissue. Uh, we got uh, the experience from uh, um, a, the uh, general surgery in which uh, the risk of recurrence after mesh for inguinal hernia has decreased dramatically up to 50 to 75 percent with the use of mesh compared to the, the repairing without mesh. But unfortunately, the vagina is not the abdomen because it's a virtual cavity with a compliance with hormonal and sexual influences and uh, must remain pliable during a pelvic organ filling or emptying or during sexual function. So, what's happened when a mesh is implanted in the body? There is a, a mesh incorporation process with the inflammation and uh, the fibroplasia uh, phenomenon, the um, blood vessel proliferation, and, the co and finally the collagen synthesis with the collagen maturation. If we look uh, uh, from uh, um, day zero, when it's been implanted during the surgery, until uh, the day uh, 10 and, uh, and, 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 and more, uh, we, we look at the, the uh, sudden increase of fibrin, the polymorphonuclear cell, the macrophages, uh, the fibroblasts, uh, and the capillaries. And uh, the uh, aim of any procedure is to lower the intensity and time of inflam inflammatory period. So, uh, there is uh, uh, another important aspect, the contraction of the wound during the scarring process that lead to shrinkage of the mesh after implantation that uh, um, can contract the mesh up to 40 to, uh, to 20 to 40 percent uh, approximately after 10 months. This is the one of the main problem of the mesh implants. And uh, to reduce uh, the fibrosis uh, and uh, this, uh, this phenomenon, we need to reduce uh, the pores and macroporous are the more acceptable material uh, during the implant into the pelvic cavity. And another important, uh, important aspect is to reduce as much as possible the amount of materials to reduce the scar tissue formation. Which are the materials currently available? The autograph, holograph, the biological material, as well as synthetic material. For in the the use, obviously, is for incontinence with a sling, or uh, for uh, pelvic organ prolapse, cystocele, rectocele, enterocele, and vault prolapse. If we look at the classification of the mesh, we have a synthetic with absorbable or non-absorbable. And uh, between non-absorbable, we have a monofilament and multifilament. There is a big difference between mono and versus multifilament because uh, the, the multifilament has uh, the, the uh, distance between pores uh, very small that impede the macrophages to enter and to remove the bacteria. This is very impressive uh, uh, electron micrography. You see the macrophages and the bacteria that can be removed if the pores are largest. 
which are the materials available? There are different uh, uh, synthetic mesh, but the question is, all or polypropylene number one are similar? Uh, not at all, because there are differences in terms of porosity, density, monos versus multifilament, edges and, and suture type. And this is the characteristic of, uh, of uh, um, materials uh, according to the to the uh, weight, uh, you see the, the, the grams for square meter, 36, 90 or 41, the thickness or the mesh pores. And uh, unfortunately, there is no perfect um, material for pop repair because uh, you see there are uh, um, uh, material that exceed uh, 50 uh, centimeter of water uh, of resistance while normally during routine activity a, a, a woman, a patient cannot uh, arrive up to uh, uh, under a centimeter of, the, of, of water. That means that the materials are absolutely, the actual materials or the previous materials absolutely unfit to, to, to be implanted in the body. These are some uh, new proposal, the hexagon mesh with uh, lightweight, you see 24 gram for square meter with high porosity, or the titanium, titanized uh, mesh implant that uh, uh, with this uh, uh, new uh, material, we reduce the inflammation rates, uh, there is no encapsulation, and there is a low shrinkage phenomenon. Also, there are some other proposals, the embed, the wire visible with the MRI, uh, just to, to uh, increase uh, the visibility of the materials once has been implanted, or also the PVDF with the peculiarity of reduction of bacterial adhesion or resistant to, to, to wear or to traction. And also a new proposal of tissue regeneration on uh, uh, electrospinning, uh, innovative uh, tissue engineering technology for electrostatic spinning uh, of polymers. Uh, as well as uh, some uh, uh, um, attachment of primary vaginal fibroblast uh, to implant material coated with a platelet-rich plasma. Uh, which are the evolution of the pelvic organ prolapse surgery? Uh, we pass from uh, the first generation at the big, in, the, in the half of 90s uh, with the, the cell tailor mesh to the Troger guided mesh in uh, the beginning of uh, this uh, new century to the single incision mesh that has been proposed uh, more recently. But uh, nevertheless, uh, there is a, a high risk of exposure due to the mucosal trauma, to the skin implantation depth or level, to the excessive tension or the hematoma formation. This is a very interesting uh, paper published uh, recently about the risk factor for mesh erosion after uh, um, female um, pelvic floor reconstructive surgery. You see there is in favor old versus a young patient in favor of, of, of erosion. Uh, the diabetes versus no diabetes, obviously, if there is no diabetes, uh, there is a, a, a reduced the risk of erosion. Also, smoking versus no smoking patient, as well as the patient with the previous pelvic surgery or no previous pelvic surgery. Concomitant hysterectomy, that is another important uh, um, aspect for uh, increase the uh, rate of erosion, as well as a senior surgeon versus a junior um, surgeon. That it means that the senior surgeon has less erosion rate compared to the junior surgeon. So, in conclusion, there are some uh, some risk factors, so like uh, younger age, more parities. Uh, premenopausal status, diabetes, smoking, concomitant hysterectomy, or surgery performed by a junior surgeon, and potential pro protective factor is concomitant post surgery or preservation of the uterus. This is very impressive and very bad results after implant. And as you know, after the FDA in 2008, there was a, 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 a second warning in 2011 
that uh, um, put the alarm uh, against the the implantation of uh, transvaginal mesh, and there was uh, a, a dramatic uh, reduction of the transvaginal surgery with mesh compared to the abdominal surgery. Why? Because uh, the the same problem of dyspareunia, the shrinkage with the bands. Uh, and uh, one of the aspects is to avoid as much as possible the tension, to avoid the folds, to avoid the bends, and mesh should lie flat. This is a very uh, an, uh, interesting paper about uh, the textile properties of synthetic prolapse mesh in, in response to on aniaxal loading. You see, if you have uh, a mesh with the, with the bends, you have an increased tension and pain and uh, uh, this is uh, the, the, the actual um, product uh, available on the market until uh, recently. And you see the pore size, 2.5, uh, 1.8, etc., and the porosity. But uh, if we look what's happened after the, 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 the loading in, uh, in, uh, in, in, on the mesh, you see that there is... Uh, it dramatically decrease uh, if you apply zero newton to ten newton on uh, on the pores. That means that uh, the the macro porous become like a, 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 a micro porous, and so there is a, a one of the the reason for uh, this uh, unsuccess. And there is a, a new proposal: the uh, oxetic geometries. The oxetic geometries uh, can reduce. Uh, they decrease uh, when you um, ex uh, um, put uh, the detention of the materials and uh, avoid uh, the, 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 to form uh, a band uh, compared to, to a mesh. And this is a very impressive uh, aspect of, uh, according to different materials. So to prevent the mesh pore collapse, uh, the oxetic geometries is uh, absolutely uh, the more uh, acceptable from the human body. And this is a, a, a very recent uh, uh, paper published by, by the group of uh, um, Pamela Moali, in, uh, in, in which you see that uh, um, if you um, use uh, the oxetic geometry, there is a, a reduction in the sense. Is uh, the same as used in the footwear to expand uh, the sole while walking or running. Uh, what, what, which is the the situation of uh, of uh, of um, mesh um, uh, surgery in uh, in uh, in uh, in Europe? This is a, a, a lecture I did uh, last year about the the actual position of countries. As you know, there is no uh, concern about uh, stress uh, urinary incontinence surgery with uh, with uh, with a synthetic material in the Mediterranean countries, uh, and uh, um, you see the, uh, the, 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 the Scotland as well as the UK and the, all the Anglo-Saxon countries, they have uh, a, they banned all uh, synthetic material, uh, which, which is the situation in Spain, for instance. There is uh, the, the, the mesh are allowed in, uh, in a grade three or four prolapse or in recurrent prolapse, while in Greece has defin definitely declined the use of transvaginal mesh except for the sacrocolpopexy. In France, as you know, the sacrocolpopexy is the gold standard, but the vaginal mesh are, are coming back. And in Italy, not less than 30% has been uh, um, treated the patient with a transvaginal approach. But uh, um, just uh, in April uh, of this year, the FDA pulls all the vaginal mesh, mesh product of the market because uh, the, the, this is uh, the, the results of the, of the Boston Scientific. Uh, there was no difference in terms of, of results of efficacy of 12 months between uh, the, the synthetic versus uh, Native tissue repair. That's the reason why the FDA, like the at 24 or 36 months, there is no no difference, and uh, this is the reason why the FDA banned completely in the United States all kind of mesh. 
even though there was a petition from the OGS, the American European Ecological Society, in terms uh, of, uh, of uh, um, rethink uh, to this, uh, uh, this uh, banning of the, the material. In conclusion, we need to abandon the transvaginal mesh reconstructive surgery. I think uh, um, we have a new material, the lightweight, this is a, a study compared the laparoscopic sacrocolpopexy uh, compared to total vaginal mesh procedure. There is no difference in terms of, uh, of mesh holes, let's say, the, uh, the, the folic catheter or the operating time. Uh, there is uh, uh, no difference in terms of uh, uh, anatomical efficacy and uh, uh, erosion rate. And uh, uh, even though there is uh, a, 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 a difference in terms of the length of the vagina, obviously in a abdominal way there is uh, an increase in the length on compared to the vaginal side, but there is no difference in terms of the outcomes. As well as also the uh, fe female sexual function after vaginal mesh repair versus native tissue repair, there is no difference in terms of, 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 uh, of uh, those uh, uh, procedures. In conclusion, we match we, which mesh for which patient? Transvaginal synthetic mesh offer anatomical results superior to surgery with native tissue for primary treatment, but there is no evidence of improvement in patient quality of life. Complication associated with transvaginal mesh range between 10 to 15 percent, but complications sometimes include severe problems that may not be resolvable and can compromise the patient's quality of life permanently. And the treatment in first surgery with synthetic pr procedure uh, in absence of specific risk factor must be discour discouraged. The use of transvaginal synthetic mesh in the first surgery may be appropriate in uh, collagen diseases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obesity, neuromuscular da damage to the pelvic floor, but in, uh, in the presence of uh, an apical prolapse, sacrocolpopexy offers a high success rate in the absence of significant complication, gra grade of evidence A with level 1, and the treatment of recurrent prolapse is an indication of the use of synthetic prosthesis transvaginal but the, the prosthesis should be inserted by surgeon experience in the treatment of complex and recurrent prolapse and also in the management of any complications. There is no evidence of any anatomical superiority of the treatment of apical prolapse with transvaginal kit compared to transvaginal surgery without prosthesis, and the prosthesis repair of the abdominal um, prolapse of the apical or multi-compartimental prolapse is associated with a clear efficacy in the absence of significant complication rates. And synthetic mesh should not be used for the treatment of posterior prolapse because the complications are potentially dangerous. Thank you for your attention.